Hello everyone, you are watching Sahib Academy. If you like our videos, then please subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon for the regular updates and also follow us on Instagram, Sahib Academy. Now let's go to the video. Hi everyone, welcome back to the seventh video of capital budgeting chapter. Now in this video, we are going to understand what is meant by capital rationing. Now capital rationing is a very simple concept if you know the net present value technique properly and profitability index. Yes, if you don't know what these techniques are, then you will find it very difficult to understand this concept. Okay, so if you don't know, then please go to the description below. I will put the links over there. You can watch the NPV video and the PI video. Yeah, and then come back to this video. If you already know those two techniques, then believe me, capital rationing is a very simple concept. Yeah, so let's start the video. Let's understand what is meant by capital rationing. Now, see here, the basic idea behind this concept capital rationing is that we don't have enough money in the company. Yeah, we are short of capital. We don't have enough capital. So if you don't have enough capital, then this capital is what? It is a limited resource, right? So this limited resource has to be used properly and appropriately. And that is what is meant by capital rationing. When does capital rationing happen? It happens when there are insufficient funds. Capital rationing is a situation when in the company there are insufficient funds and company cannot undertake all the projects. Now, you already know that shareholder wealth maximizes if a company undertakes the positive NPV projects, isn't it? See here, all these projects are positive. But can the company select all the projects? Can the company go for all the projects? No. Why? Because it will not have enough funds to invest in all the projects, right? So what it will do, the company, it will do capital rationing. It will select the best projects among all these positive projects, yeah? So that's what is capital rationing, yeah? We don't have enough funds and we have to select what? We have to select the projects, but we can't invest in all the projects. So what are we going to do? We are going to choose the best projects, right? So see here, why do we have insufficient funds? See, the reason for that is two types of reasons, okay? One is soft capital rationing and the other is hard capital rationing, okay? Internal reasons and external reasons. Internal reasons means what? It means that company imposes its own spending restriction, yeah? The management, what the management will do? The management will place a limit on the finance department that you cannot go above this limit, yeah? You can't invest in so many projects, yeah? You can only invest in certain projects. Right. So that's a restriction the company places. And why does the company does that? Because the company thinks that we don't have enough skills for that limited management skills or they don't want to raise external finance, debt finance and raise the gearing of the company or the company wants to focus on small number of projects and increase the profitability of those projects only. Yeah. So because of these internal reasons, what can happen? The finance department will not have enough funds to invest in many projects right so that's soft capital rationing internal reasons then we have hard capital rationing external reasons see it means that hard capital rationing means the company cannot get funds from outside yeah banks won't lend us anymore for example maybe there's a recession going on in the country or maybe the company has poor track record they don't have good credit rating and maybe they don't have enough assets to secure the loan or poor management skills yeah so because of these reasons what happens the company has insufficient funds all right so that's what capital rationing means we have limited funds so what we have to do we have to choose the best projects we cannot invest in all the positive projects positive npv projects so see the technique for this to choose the best project is according to capital rationing is what we have to understand first is we have to understand divisible projects and indivisible projects right so what is divisible project divisible project means the projects in which you can invest partially for example yeah there is a project to build a building all right of 20 stories all right of how many how many stories 20 stories so let's say you don't have enough funds to invest in that project okay let's say it requires 20 million and you don't have enough funds you only have 15 million so what you can do, you can reduce the scale of that project, yeah? Let's say you reduce the scale of the project by reducing the stories. Let's say you're going for only 15 stories, so only 15 million, just for an example, right? So that's a divisible project. All right, you can invest in them partially. Then we have indivisible project. Indivisible project means what? In these type of projects, you have to invest in entirety or not at all, okay? Entirely you have to invest or not at all. Is that clear? So that's indivisible project. For example, flyover. You can't do half flyover or something like that. Yeah, you have to do the entire thing or not do it at all, isn't it? So there are two types of projects mostly, yeah, divisible and indivisible. So if you have got divisible projects, yeah, if you have got divisible projects in the question, then what you have to do, you have to use the profitability index and rank them, yeah, highest to lowest PI. Yeah, you have to rank them and then you have to go on selecting the project till the funds are exhausted, yeah. For example, if there are five projects, A, B, C, D, and E, and let's say, 
the ranking is also like that okay for example just for an example yeah highest to lowest so what you're going to do is you are going to go on selecting the projects let's do a b c but then let's say you don't have enough funds to invest in d yeah you went on selecting a b c because it had high profitability index and then the last ranking was e so you will not select e but then you have some money left so you can invest a little bit on d because here we are talking about divisible projects right so that d project let's say it was a 100k project it was 100,000 project and let's say you had only 70k left after investing in all these projects so what you can do is you know you can invest partially in this project in this d project right you will invest let's say 70 percent because it's 100k project right so let's say you're investing 70 percent yeah 70k means 70 percent right so yeah you're investing 70 percent so it is assumed that if you are going for the investment at 70 percent investment then it is assumed that you will also get the return correspondingly 70 percent the npv the positive npv which you're getting you'll also get 70 percent of that okay there's an assumption like that right so that's what will happen when you have got divisible project you have to rank them with the pi profitability index and go on selecting them till the funds are exhausted and then you will reach at a point where you will not have enough funds to invest in a certain project so what you're going to do you are going to invest partially in that all right whatever funds you have you have to use the ratio proportionately you will invest right then what if you have indivisible projects yeah you have to do the projects entirely or not at all so here you can't invest partially yeah you have to do it entirely or not at all so what are you going to do you are going to select the combination yeah a b and c for example if you have 20 million yeah just for an example then let's say here 5 million 10 million and here let's say 5 million so how much it is it's 20 million right so you can only go for a b and c combination or what you can do b c and d yeah 10 million 5 million let's say here 2 million so like that you have to see the combination and the best combination is which one the combination which gives you the highest net present value yeah the positive npv yes so that's how you have to do when you have got indivisible projects if you have got divisible then you have to rank them and go on selecting them and the last project what you're going to do you're going to invest partially if you have got indivisible then you have to make combinations of projects yeah within the limits yes you can't go above 20 million you have to make a combination below the 20 million or equal to 20 million something like that yes and you have to select the best combination which gives you the highest net present value yeah let's understand this with uh, an example so you will understand this better yeah let's take an example now here we have an example see the question over here as you can see we have four projects over here a b c and d and then the cost of each project is given 80,000, 150,000, 70,000, 130,000, yes. And then discounted cash flows are also given. So here the inflows are already discounted. You don't have to calculate discount anything. It's already discounted. It's a simple example. And then here we have the net present values, 20, 40, 44,000, 70,000, yes. And then the question says that we have only 300,000. So here we have insufficient funds, right? Limited funds. So we can't invest in all the projects. So what do we have to do? We have to select the best projects. Yes, but before doing that, what we have to know? We have to know whether the projects are divisible or indivisible. Now let's assume here first that the projects are divisible. So if the projects are divisible, then how are we going to select the best among these? So see, it's very simple as I've already explained you that we have to do what? We have to calculate profitability index, PI. Yeah, we have to use PI and rank them according to profitability index if the projects are divisible, right? So see, the formula of PI is very simple. I hope you already know this, yeah? See, it's very simple. Present value of inflow divided by present value of outflow. Whatever that has gone out, whatever that has come in, yeah? Divide those two together, the present value of that. Yeah, now these are present values, right? On the zero year, yes? The cost is on the year zero and then the inflows, whatever you have got over the period of time, it has been brought to the year zero by discounting it, right? So it has already been discounted. So all these two are what? These two are present values. So what we have to do? We have to calculate PI. So let me just show you one. See, it's very simple. What you have to do? Inflow divided by outflow. So this is the inflow. This is the outflow, yes? So 1 lakh, yeah, 100,000 divided by 80,000. So you get what 1.25 yes so what does 1.25 mean what is the meaning of this profitability index it means that if you invest a dollar a rupee in that project a then you will get return of 1.25 on that project on that one dollar that is the interpretation of profitability index okay so that's how you have to calculate the pi of all the projects when the projects are divisible and then you have to rank them simple highest to lowest so 1.63 is the highest 
so that's what rank one and then rank two rank three rank four simple you have to rank them highest to lowest and then what you have to do you have to go on selecting the projects yes that's what i told you so see you have to take the projects in the sequence of ranking okay so the first rank is c so c then d then b then a right then take the cost and then what you're going to do you have 300 yes you have 300000 yes minus you will directly invest in 70 yeah in the c project directly you will invest 70 so minus 70 now you have left 230 can you not invest in project d of course you can yeah so you're going to do that minus 130 so you are left with 100000 now so can you invest in project b entirely you cannot because project b costs 150000 right but here the projects are divisible so what you're going to do you are going to invest partially yeah whatever you have 100 right so let's invest 100 into that project if you invest 100 into that project what will happen you will also get the return correspondingly the same percentage yeah i've told you if you are investing just for an example 70 percent into a project then the return will also be 70 percent yeah so that's pro rata so you have to do a calculation over here you have to show how much npv you are getting so in these two projects in the c and d you are going to get the entire npv yeah npv is directly given so in the project c npv is what 44,000 and in the d it's 70,000 so you have invested 100% in those two projects yeah 70 and 130 so you are going to get the entire npv but in the project b you have invested only 100 so you have to get return on that project also in corresponding nature so we have to do a calculation over here see you have invested how much you have invested only 100 yes so see the total NPV on that project was on the project B was how much 40,000 but you have invested see the total NPV was 40,000 on the project B but you have invested only how much 100,000 and the total investment was 150,000 yes so divided by 150,000 yeah so 26,666.666 yes so this calculation you have to do to calculate corresponding NPV yeah corresponding to the investment you have made so this much NPV you are going to get so in total if you see the NPV which you are going to get this thing and these two right so plus 44,000 plus 70,000 so this is the total NPV which you are going to get all right one like 40,666 yeah so this is how you have to do if the projects are divisible what you have to do calculate the PI rank them according to the pi and go on selecting the projects till the funds are exhausted and in some project at last what will happen you will have some funds right only some funds left right so you have to invest in that project partially right and you have to calculate partial npv whatever it is right so this is what you do when the projects are divisible then if projects are indivisible what you're going to do if the projects are indivisible you have to take combinations right you have to take combinations and each of those combinations should not exceed your limit your limit is 300,000 you have only 300,000 yeah so see it's very simple let's see the first combination a b and c can we do that a b and c see 80,000 plus see here 80,000 plus 150 plus 70 yes we can have that combination yeah 300 so it doesn't go above our limit so a b and c combination can be there so a b and c combination so what is the total npv we get from this combination add up the npv of these three projects a b and c right 20 40 and 44 so 20 plus 40 plus 44 that's equal to 104 yes so 104 104000 that's a total npv on this combination right but then let's see can we have any other combination b c and d can we have b c and d no we can't see here 150 plus 70 plus 130 that goes above our limit 350 we don't have that much money yeah we can't have that combination so see another combination c d and a right c d a so if we go for that c d a 70 plus 130 plus 80 yeah we can we can have c d a combination or you can say a c d yeah whatever you want so yes we can have right it's within our limit 280 we can invest in this combination so the total NPV on that combination is what? ACD, right? 20, 44, 70. 20 plus 44 plus 70. That is equal to 134,000. So yes, 134,000, right? So can we have any more combinations? DAB, can we do that? 
no we can't write see here 130 plus 150 plus 80 that's equal to 360 again it goes above our limit so these are the only two combinations we can have ABC and ACD right so now the which is the best combination here the best combination is which has the highest NPV right so this one has the highest NPV so we are going to go for that combination yeah so this is what you have to do this is very simple right the capital rationing is not a big deal it's a very simple thing if the projects are divisible rank them according to PI and go on selecting the projects till the funds are exhausted and in the last projects you are going to invest partially and you are going to get NPV also partially and here choose the combination which has the highest NPV and each of these combinations or options has to be what it has to be within your limit yeah because you cannot invest more than your limit right you only have this much money right simple so that's what capital rationing is all right easy right okay then see you in the next video